you can't have a dog out of its crate if you can't trust it to not chew your things and like or pee themselves. in your house or whatever eat it might everything. eat yeah. everything. Like yeah. that's also not safe for them as well. So we see crating them a lot in the early stages as like a form of like loving them. We answer a lot of questions from new puppy owners about puppy crate training. How to use the crate, when to use the crate. Is it weird if I feel guilty when I'm using my crate? Well, the short answer is no, but what's really important is how you're using that puppy's crate in their training. In today's video, we're gonna to talk to new puppy owners, Ryan and Lindsay, about their puppy crate training experience. We're gonna show them exactly how using the crate more often earlier leads to more freedom earlier. And isn't that what we all really want with our puppies? Let's jump into the conversation. And it's shocking, the answer. Um, so if you were to add up all of the bits together, they would probably at this age, and for months from now as well, probably spend it's a guess, 18 to 20 it hours yeah. Yeah. in it the crate. Could be. It could be really? 20 hours. Yes, yep. not obviously together, but it depends on, on your on your life too, but yeah. But here's um, the thing, and why that is, yeah. why that is, um, you know, not that way that's fair for the puppy. And it mm -hmm. does sound like a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, the response does. is exactly what anyone would expect. But the thing is, the things you're doing when your puppy's out of their crate, it's not about the quantity of time, it's about the quality. So you're doing things like exercising, you're doing things like training, you know, you're doing your snuggle time. So it's really that one-on-one -on -one attention. Quality. Actually, quality, yeah. Really focusing on making sure that the puppy's, you know, uh, using the brain and their body anytime that they're out. And by the time, maybe a 15 minute training session, that might even be long for him. Uh, but you know, at the end of 10 or 12 minutes of really working and thinking and doing stuff, uh, he's ready to like come down a little bit. I want you to really think about that last point. What is quality time out of the crate? If you're feeling guilty about using your puppy's crate, maybe you should be. It's vitally important that when your puppy's out of their crate, that they're not just meandering around the kitchen, that you're doing something with them. You're spending quality time with them, building engagement, teaching them that you're worth listening to. That way your puppy will choose you when they're not sure what the right choice is. This is something that's so important. It, it, I've seen it change hundreds of puppy owners' lives. Understanding the difference between quality of time out of the crate and quantity of time out of the crate. Doing restraint recalls, which we talk about a lot, especially when they're puppies, because it does a couple of things really well. It exercises the puppy while teaching them value for their name. But it's a uh, training exercise that just, you know, that they get to have so much fun, but it takes like six, eight repetitions of going back and forth between you two over a 15 foot span. And he's like, okay, I'm tired now. Like that was a lot and I'm ready to just lie down and have a snooze. Or, you know, maybe we can sit down and have a snuggle for 30 minutes or what, however long. And then he's ready to go back into his crate. That's really where the value is. It's so important because then anytime he's coming out of your, out of his crate, you're the center of his world. Mm -hmm. And everything is about interaction and engagement with you. So many people will have their puppy out and just let them sort of meander about the kitchen and wander around, which we'll do too. Mm -hmm. But if we're- They get free time. For sure, if we're able to supervise it. Where the mistake is made is just sort of allowing the puppy to do their own thing when you're not watching. And that's when they get into trouble. They're mm -hmm. chewing on their leash or house line, on the shoes, on the uh, you know uh, baseboards. And um, they're just not really learning anything. What they're learning is that you are interesting, but also chewing on the shoes is really tasty mm -hmm. and it really satiates my need to chew. So why would I choose you when I know for sure that you know chewing on the shoe will make me feel good? So if he's sleeping or napping, then yeah, you should put him put him in, into yeah. the crate. Into the crate. Yeah, that's a great that's example. Opposed just like napping around the house, different places, because yeah. I mean, ultimately you're gonna think they're there, and then you turn around and they're not. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like if totally. you're like in your office or you're at like the kitchen table and you're like doing something and the puppy's like sleeping beside you out on their bed after they just had a thing and you're planning on staying there a little longer, then yeah, that might be okay. But if you're like gonna be like, mm, I'd really like to get up and like do something right now, then I would put the puppy in the crate. So to give you a different different perspective on what Ken said, um, which, which was great, basically my goal when I get a puppy at this age is when they're out of their crate, I'm constantly working towards preparing for them not to be in a crate anymore. Yeah. So like when they're a puppy, they come out, they do the things that Ken said, like I do a little bit of training, I work like teaching the dog to go and lie on a bed, I work on leave it, so I work on all of these different things, tire the puppy out, and then I put them in their crate, and then I go and do what I need to do. And then it's been like a couple hours later, I'm like, okay, I probably should get the puppy out and do something. Out for a pee, we do another 20 minutes on whatever it might be, 
okay, I've done that puppy back in the crate. Now I got to go teach class or I got to go do this. And then I got to get the puppy out, do my thing, put it away. But what I'm doing when I'm out is working towards teaching the puppy skills so that when I'm ready to not put them in the crate, they know how to leave it. They know how to lie in a bed. They know how to respond to their name. They know how to not bark at the door. Like I work on those things in little spurts in between their crate time until I get to the point where the puppy's listening so well that I don't feel like I need to use the crate to um, prevent the puppy from doing poor choices anymore because now the puppy's sort of trained. So sort of the older they get, the less crate time they have. Mm -hmm. But the reason why they get less crate time is because they're more trained and now I can trust them. And I don't have to worry about like micromanaging them every single second of the day. Right. So on busier days, they have more crate time and I do whatever I can to make the in-betweeny times more exciting. If it's like on a Sunday, they'll probably spend more time out of the crate because I'm home and I'm paying attention. But um, I also, I'm a big believer when I have puppies, if I'm home and even though I have the time, I still implement crate time when it's, uh, when their puppies are young because I don't want the puppy to become, uh, like, create separation anxiety or I want them to learn that, yeah, I'm here, buddy, but you could be out of your crate, but you'll also be in your crate and, like, don't panic about that. It's not a big deal. If I'm here doing something, don't be whining and being like, but you're there, let me out. I don't like that. I want so you just to you be chill. Them not to be, just by putting them in the crate, they'll stop whining after yes. a while? Just by ignoring them? Yeah, well, there's two ways. You can ignore them, and sometimes um, they'll settle themselves and just sort of relax. And sometimes you have to go through the steps of like teaching them not to, to do it. Yeah, tell them to be quiet. Sometimes you have to go over and say quiet, and like bang on their crate or wiggle their crate a little bit to interrupt their noise. And then when they settle, you can praise them from there. Um, we have some great... Uh, bark, crate barking videos that will go step by step uh, on that um, as well. Um, but it usually will start by them getting... Dogs will bark in their crate initially when they're used to having a ton of free time and all of a sudden you take it away from them. They're like, hey, what the heck? So it, it does take a little bit of time for the puppy to get used to it. Okay. But it's not a long-term long, long -term thing. That's what people are so concerned about with the crate and like feeling guilty about it. Oh. This is just like the puppy training stage. Once they're a little bit older and they have some of those skills then it's just something you can use or not use if you want to. Right. But you don't want to do it too early because then you are dealing with... Like, we don't have puppies that do a lot of chewing or, you know, I can't think of... I don't think Fives ever chewed anything in the house. Not because he's some perfect angel, but he literally hasn't had an opportunity to because my eyeballs are either on him or he was in the crate when he was a puppy. So if he ever even thought about it, I was like, hey, right away. And he was like, whoa. And it just... That, that was it. That, we were done. Uh, post to some people and puppies are out because we want to give them freedom but then we're like bit busy, busy making dinner or you're helping Logan with something or whatever it might be and you're like oh crap where's the puppy um and then that's when that's when he goes this is cool no one's watching me right. so as firefighters you guys both know um that everything inside the car turns into a projectile at a sudden stop so we always encourage uh some sort of restraint we use crates in the car you can actually get crash tested crates for your car we love those um, but you know, that doesn't work for a lot of people. So I think there are harness options. The problem I have with harnesses is I don't, uh, in the car, is, I mean, I don't know how they're tested. I just don't know enough about it to speak to it. And dogs can still chew things Stuff, inside the car sure. if they're on a harness. For sure. Obviously, like if that's your only option, then that's better than nothing. Yeah. But in a perfect world, it would be best to keep them in, in a crate because it's the safest, the safest option for all all reasons, car accidents, also like inside that inside the car, making sure that they're not going to wreck anything in the car. Um, they're well, not going to interrupt you while you're driving. Like for sure, it also allows you to like train that space. So you know you're teaching him to be more comfortable in his crate while you're traveling. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have a couple of videos or one video we shot recently that talks specifically about that. And um, it's just you know it, it creates a better situation for both the driver and the puppy. It sounds like he's pretty good in his crate most of the time. What do you do when he fusses? What are your steps at that point? So I've been talking to him. Okay. Just. Just actually saying, you're okay. Okay. Like in a calm voice and mm -hmm. just like, but not taking you out. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. And will he settle when you tell him to um, go Like in the middle of the night and stuff. Like last night there was the thunderstorm. So when we went out to go pee and we came back, it was like thundering and lightning yeah. and she was whimpering and stuff. So I just like actually kind of sat on the couch beside him and then I just started talking to him. Mm -hmm. So um, every time he whimper, I'd be like, oh, you're okay. Like, it's time to go to bed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he eventually, like, after maybe five minutes, he calmed down. He settled. He settled. Good. So I love the fact that you are um, not immediately letting him out of his crate, but there might be times when he needs to come out of his crate. So if you were like, hey, buddy, go, you know, 
uh, hey, knock it off, you be quiet, or just go lie down, or whatever the thing is, and you get that behavior, that's great. Um, if you feel like he might need to go out, or there's a reason that he needs to go out of his crate, don't miss that opportunity. If he's been quiet for 30 seconds or a minute and you think he does need to go out, you can take him out at that point. Because it's a little bit more on your terms. There's going to be situations where you're like, oh boy, you know, he hasn't had a poop tonight and I know he's got to he's gotta go. Um, so you'll, it's hard to not like rush through the process of letting him out or putting, keeping him in his crate for too long and then he has an accident. But that meant that, um, St those steps that you mentioned where you're like, oh, just be quiet and go lie down or whatever the thing is. And then he relaxes for 30 seconds, maybe that's enough time that it's on your terms now that he's coming out and you can take him outside. A lot of people struggle with that. They're like, well, I don't want to take my puppy out when they're, when they're fussing. Like, but they, I know they need to go. What do I do? Right. Um, kind of have to use your gut in that situation. That's right. Which, that's what makes it difficult because like people want like when the puppy does this, then I do this. Mm -hmm. When the puppy does this, well, then I do this. But it doesn't always work that way that you have to be a little bit, uh, you have to be a bit flexible in your thought process. Um, I think what you said you were doing is very, really good. Yeah. Just a side tip, and I'm not saying that you were doing this, but just something to be aware of, is when puppies are making noise, how we settle them and the tone of voice that we use or the things that we say can sometimes embellish the behavior rather than like stop the behavior. Oh, okay. So there is a difference between being like, it's okay, buddy, you're all right. In comparison, like, it's all right, you're fine. Lie down, you're good, lie down. Totally different for a dog. Right. One is like, keep I doing what you're doing. Oh, okay. Praise, I'm praising you. I might as well be saying, good boy, good, good whining. And the other one is like, you're fine. You're good. Don't worry. I'm, tough love. Yeah, tough love. I'm still being, I'm still being nice. I'm not like, ah, ah, ah. I'm not like doing that. But it's kind of like, you know what? You're fine. You're good. Lie down. You're fine. It's a little bit more um, leader like. Right. And I'm I'm using my voice tone to sort of settle the dog rather than accidentally re uh, rewarding the dog. It's sort of like I was just saying um, a moment ago about like if puppies are worried and we pick them up and we're like, it's okay, you're all right, it's okay. That soothing voice mm -hmm. sometimes, and I think that comes from like babies. We, we would, exactly. Yeah. Um, but dogs are different than that because they're always, they, they need to, they're always seeking reinforcement. So even though like people think reinforcement is like treats or like physical things, Things, but reinforcement to puppies could also be affection. It could also be how somebody's speaking to them or touching them or holding them. Like to them, it's like, okay, they love they like what I'm doing. The, the reinforcement that I'm getting is so positive right now. They must love what I'm doing. So there's a way that I can do that with it's a bit more but like firm. Yeah. Like, you yeah, know, if you were like control. Yeah. If you were like lost in the forest, you would want somebody to be like, I know the way. Let's go. Yeah. Like they're not panicking. You guys go. You could three of you are firefighters. You probably all possess this deep inside your bones, this <laughs> ability to do this, um, which is perfect for dog training because sometimes people are a little bit too emotional and then the puppies sort of get mixed messages. It's right. not that you need to be mean. You just sort of have to be like, you're fine. You're good. Get over it. You're going to survive. Okay. You're fine. <laughs> That's sort of the tone that you kind of want to take in some of those situations. Right. Yeah. One of the most common challenges in puppy crate training is barking. Now, if you have a barking problem, watch this video. If your puppy has a barking problem, you should also watch the video. Yeah, if yeah. you if you have a barking problem, there's a whole other channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have gone. Bark, bark. <laughs> On that note, I'm Kale. I'm Ken. Happy training. <laughs>